Hello everybody, my name is Steve. For those who didn't ride the elevator down with me, I'll be giving the first two presentations this morning. How do you build a dam in the middle of the Colorado River? I'll explain how that was accomplished here. To begin with, four diversion tunnels were required to divert the Colorado River around the work site. These are the diversion tunnels right here. Each one of these tunnels is about 4,000 feet long and 50 feet in diameter. Now folks are actually standing inside one of the original tunnels here right now. Specifically, we are located right there. That's where we're standing. Pretty awesome. Dynamite had to be used to blast through solid rock to create each one of these tunnels. Using dynamite was one of the most dangerous job functions here at Hoover Dam. To force the water into these four diversion tunnels, an upper coffer dam was built. A second coffer dam was built below the work area to prevent the Colorado River from coming back in and flooding everything out. Once these two coffer dams were completed, then the work zone was then pumped dry, which is about a mile long. Workers had to remove up to 135 feet of loose rock and sediment to reach bedrock so the dam would have a solid foundation. One truckload every 15 seconds was removing rock and sediment out of the work area. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 363 days a year. The reason for 363 is that they got two days off, Christmas and Thanksgiving. During construction of the dam, on average, one bucket containing eight cubic yards of concrete was delivered approximately every 78 seconds. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 363 days a year. Now this process continued for two years. Just before the dam was completed, these three upper diversion tunnels were sealed off in order to let Lake Mead fill up. This fourth diversion tunnel was left operational to permit the Colorado River to continue on its way around the work area and then downstream on its natural course. Once the desired lake level of Lake Mead was reached, this fourth diversion tunnel was also sealed up. In the final year of construction, four intake towers were built, two on the Nevada side, two on the Arizona side. Each one of these tunnels is 395 feet high. They rest on solid rock ledges that had to be blasted out of the solid rock canyon walls. Now folks, that was an engineering feat that was not surpassed for many, many years. Water that goes into the intake towers then flows into 30 foot diameter penstock water pipe big enough for a train locomotive to ride through. Now we actually have one of those original penstock water pipes outside these windows here folks. 96,000 gallons of water per second flows through this one pipe. Now that's enough water to fill one Olympic sized swimming pool in just seven seconds. The water then goes into smaller 13 foot diameter penstock water pipes, creating the energy and velocity needed to spin the turbines located in these generators shown here in red. The water is then released into the river and it flows on its way downstream. Now the last two, the last key features, pardon me, are the two spillways. One on the Nevada side, one on the Arizona side. The spillways prevent water from going over the top of the dam, protecting the power plant down below. They're located 27 feet below the actual crest height of the dam. They've only been used twice in the whole history of Hoover Dam. Once in 1941 to test the use, and once for real in 1983 due to very extreme heavy snowfall that year. In this photo behind me here, it was taken in 1983. You can see that the level of the lake is just seven feet from the top of the dam. You could almost reach down there and touch it. These spillways were used for 63 consecutive days with the water flow roughly equal that of Niagara Falls. This was a historical event, ladies and gentlemen. People from everywhere came just to see these spillways in action. The water name that goes into these spillways, goes into these 50 foot diameter spillway tunnels around the dam, down in the river downstream. Now that ends this portion of the tour, but by no means are we done, folks. The next stop is right here, the balcony overlooking the Nevada side of the power plant. I do need to be out in front of the group to lead us back. To